Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Isaiah 58, 12, NIV. Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and power of Jesus Christ. And welcome to Outreach Connection. It is a pleasure to be with you. I'm Gary Schluckabeer, your host for Outreach Connection. And I hope you stick with us today or maybe call somebody up on the phone and say, hey, you need to watch this program because we have a very, very interesting subject today that I really, really want you to see. There is a, a lot of information that uh, 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 will come from this program that perhaps you didn't know about. And the more that I have studied and, and looked into this uh, program myself, it has been so eye-opening. And I'm talking about the a uh, couple that I have with me today, they are missionaries to the preborn in Iowa, but I like to think maybe they're missionaries to the preborn any place around the whole wide world. And I'd like to welcome Donna and Dan Holman this morning. Thank you for being with us. It's so good to have you drive down uh, to be on our program with us. And uh, I know that. Wow, your ministry is one of those ministries that a lot of people maybe kind of shy away from. And I know you've got a lot of information. You've been here on Outreach Connection before when uh, Dr. Peppers had the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know there's a lot of things that hap has happened and transpired since that time as uh, our laws still convey the thing that abortion is a legal thing with us. So... Kind of tell us, now whichever one wants to start first, kind of tell us how you got started in this ministry of missionaries to the preborn. There's a verse in Proverbs that says, Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth. Well, people, it kind of irritates me when people say that it's my mission or my ministry because this is for everybody for every Christian and then in, in Ezekiel on 20 Ezekiel 22 2 it says show the bloody city her abominations mm -hmm. those are the things that God hates and he says he hates hands mm -hmm. that Amen. shed innocent blood Amen. that's right. for sure that's for sure and you have been then how many years have you been working in this ministry since 1972. 1972. Yeah. Been out on the streets at the abortion clinics. Yes. If we, you know, if I can use that word abortion, because you had a very important description, definition of the word abortion, too, that I never realized before. Tell us what, what you told me a while ago about that okay. word abortion. Okay. Uh, it, it really isn't abortion. That's the word that Planned Parenthood would probably like for us to use. Abortion is removing a dead baby, and that is not what Planned Parenthood is doing. What they're doing is they're killing a baby in, in the uterus okay. that's okay. in the uterus. In other words, it should be called aborticide or feticide okay. instead of abortion. Okay, so there's some new words, some new terminology that perhaps so many don't know about, you know, out there. Now, Brother Dan, you were, how long have you been? Well, I started in 84. I was a late bloomer compared to Donna. You know, okay. But, uh, 81, 84, somewhere in there. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it, when I became a Christian, it became apparent to me that, you know, we have to love our neighbor as ourselves, and the preborn children are our neighbor. And uh, I don't like to think of it as my ministry, you know, so much as our, as our duty as Christians, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, to speak up for the weak and helpless, you know. It, right. Uh, we're astounded that there's so little uh, ministry in that direction. You know, I mean, it's the most obvious ministry. Jesus said uh, regarding t the children in Matthew 25, he says, uh, whatever you do to them, you do to me. And when we turn there a blind are. eye, a deaf ear, and a cold shoulder towards these yes. children, we're really turning our back on God. You know, we're not loving our neighbor as ourselves, which is, you know, one of the chief uh, duties of man. Right, right. 
Tell me about some of your street experiences that you've had uh, talking to the young ladies. Um, for example, what is the age usually of the uh, young ladies that come uh, there looking to have their babies aborted? Um, we, most of the time we pick it at Planned Parenthood in Iowa City and it's a, a medical teaching college the University of Iowa, okay. and uh, most of the girls are like from 20, I would say 20 to 24, around that age. Mm -hmm. Okay, 20 to 24 that, yeah. that come, yeah, and that, and uh, now, would you say most of them are single? Are they married? I don't know who's married anymore, <laughs> you know. Well, that's a good and, point. Yeah, yeah it, it seems like uh, that's, that marriage is uh, about the only people interested in marriage are the uh, homosexuals. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, the culture's so fallen that, uh, you know, people uh, uh, sleep together without even jumping over a broomstick, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, with, with no commitment at all. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, we just presume that most people aren't married. Yeah. And uh, although there are married people that, that that uh, go for you know that go to the sure. abortion clinics also. Yeah. The, the the reason for the abortion is not rape or incest in the life of the mother like they would make you think. It's mostly they fornicated when they were in college. The girl doesn't want to tell her parents, and okay. or she's afraid her boyfriend will leave her if right. she don't get mm -hmm. an abortion. And I think those are the two main reasons. Right. The, the the euphemisms they use are. Um, they, uh, it's an unwanted pregnancy, but it, oh. in, in fact, it's an unwanted child, and yeah. and so the solution is to kill the child. Right, and uh, you know it's a reality, but the euphemism, you know, the, uh, abortion and uh, and uh, unwanted pregnancy and all that are you know are used quite a bit, but the brutal reality is uh, a dead child. Yes, that's that's for sure. Now, because of what you do, because of protesting I hope that's a correct word that I it, 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 it is we we call it we call it uh, interposing you know for the child okay. or speaking up for the child okay we, we, we try to be the the voice uh, for we, we try to represent the child that's why uh, there's uh, different mission groups you you, you had a missionary on uh, yeah. just just before us and uh, our mission is to the preborn, right. so that's why we call ourselves missionaries to the preborn. Okay, okay, and I and I like that term. I like right. that term like that. Have you ever um, gotten in trouble? <laughs> yeah, I guess by we, doing this. I guess we have. Go ahead. I've been in jail fourteen times, and he's 14. been in jail probably two hundred, mm -hmm. maybe more. Yeah. Oh, was yours more overnight or? No, no. I spent about. Over four years, you know, in, in jails, you know, probably combined time. You Com know. Yeah, combined time. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I know you have quite a story. Uh, you spent a month, 30 days, yeah. I believe. Um, I was a sidewalk counselor at Planned Parenthood in Iowa City. And I, as two couples went in at the same time, I said, Thou shalt not, God commands, Thou shalt not murder. And they have an ordinance that if you're so loud in that town that they can hear you inside, then uh, you get charged. So I you see how loud she is. <laughs> yes, I can hear. <laughs> um, the judge uh, wanted me to get a psychiatric evaluation and take whatever medicine the psych psychiatrist recommended. And we refuse to do that because the Bible says, Woe to those who, ex who accept counsel that is not of me. In other words, God doesn't want our counsel to be from a psychiatrist. He wants it to be right. his word. Right. So uh, when the, the judge, I was silent, didn't say anything when I stood before the judge. Uh, Jesus was silent. Before, yes, uh, he was. Yeah, before here. That's a and, good point. And the policeman told me I could, had a right to remain silent, but then she gave me uh, contempt, contempt charge, contempt of court for being silent in front of her. Okay. And then when I was in jail, they wanted me to strip down so they could strip search me and I refused to do that then they put me in solitary confinement in a cold room all night without a blanket 
Oh and my. after that, they put me in the psychiatric part of the hospital. Okay, mm -hmm. so how long were you in solitary confinement? Just overnight. Overnight. Yeah. But without and, any blankets in a cold cell. Yeah. It's a punishment cell. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I did get three girls saved while I was there that month. So you think it was worth it? I think it was worth it. I think it, it was worth mm -hmm. it too. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the girls saved. It's yes. still unjust. And it's unjust to kill, you know, innocent children. And we have a duty, you know, to stand against that injustice. And so uh, while she was in jail, we had organized, you know, pickets of the jail and of the courthouse, and and uh, we uh, did radio and television, you know, uh, yes. you know, to uh, to speak out against the injustice. But the injustice is really to the preborn child, and it's accepted, you know, today, you know, yeah. that uh, it, it they they've uh, managed to make it normal to kill four thousand Americans every single day. Yes, I was. Um Looking at some figures you had given me here, in the um, in Iowa in the last 13 years, 74,806 babies have been murdered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a that, that's a, that's more than the size of Iowa City. So yes, and that that's just in Iowa. Right. Now, all over the United States of America. Mm -hmm. There's um, 65 million. 65 yes. million. Since Roe right. versus Wade. And when when Jesus was sitting on the donkey, right, you know, riding the donkey into Jerusalem. It said he wept. He wept for the city. Well, when was the last time we wept for Kilcook or Hamilton or yeah, Palmyra or here. Quint, Quincy? <laughs> yes, you're right. Yeah. You're right. To sit down. And this is one of the reasons why this program is so important. You know, that maybe there's somebody out there, maybe you're listening to this, maybe you know somebody that is thinking about a, a, an abortion. I'm going to use that term because that's what we're familiar with. And uh, maybe you know somebody that you can say, uh, you know, there's a program on Outreach Connection. It's on Mondays at 9.30 in the morning, Thursdays at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and Saturdays at 7 p.m. And uh, maybe you need to watch this program that's on to hear what these missionaries to the preborn are talking about, what they have experienced themselves in reaching out to those. Now, we have got some pictures and everything. I don't know if they're going to come up. Uh, they may come up here in a little bit as we're uh, talking here with this and everything. And I know you, you have a van. Uh, I have a picture of your van here. Um, that has uh, some pictures on the side of it. You travel around then in this van? Do you park it? Uh, well, do they allow you to park it? Well, we, uh, we, we, we not only park it, we sleep in it. You know, we, okay. uh, we, we, we live out of it about, you know, There's five, six months There's a picture of the, of the van year. right there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah, it's got a fold-out bed. And uh, we, uh, you know, that's a transportation, and it's a ministry vehicle when we're traveling. It, it, uh, we, tr we travel slow, so people get a good look at it. Right. Well, yeah. that's an eye-opener, I'll tell you, to right. see something like that going down the road. It's got uh, our phone number on it, so uh, they can call us while, call. You know, while we're driving. Yeah, right, and, and to see all of that, yeah. We've right. been to San Diego, San Francisco, Florida, the New England states, up by New York. We've been... All over the United States, in it. Yeah, and then Portugal and Cuba and really, yeah, and, and a number of other countries, and uh, you know, besides that too. Yeah, yeah right. Not right. with a van, of course, but <laughs> yeah, but yourselves, right? Yes, in in this, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, as I look at these pictures here once again, it um, it is that I'm looking at here before me. It's and what you have said. It's certainly pulls the heartstring here and to realize I'm not doing enough you know what would you say to somebody out there as a, to uh, encourage them just like I said a few things there a moment ago if somebody's watching this and and they're thinking about this uh, what would you say to them well, I would encourage them, first of all, you know, to speak up in the circles that, you know, it's the sphere of influence that they have, you know, the church, their family, uh, their friends. But uh, also, uh, if they have time to do more, there's a lot of people out there that are retirement age and that they can minister with mm. us, come out at the campuses with us, and uh, they can interact with the students themselves. You know, what it is is uh, a lot of times people are afraid 
of, uh, of that kind of a conflict. I know I'm fearful at times, mm. you know, but I'm always glad I did it when, when I did it. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't look forward to going to, you know, you know to these things, okay. you know, but, but, uh, but at the same time, we've had so many great experiences, you know, uh, you know preaching. Even though at times it, it looks like it's a big conflict, it looks like it's a big argument and that type of thing, there are th there's uh, dynamics with the Holy Spirit that, uh, you know, that are happening. That you go back the next day or you go back, you know, the next week or the next year, you'll see changes in people, you know, you'll see... Uh, because we, we go to these same campuses usually twice a year, you know, okay. we've got a regular circuit that we go in the fall and the spring. Okay. I'm okay. In, in charge of the literature when we go on campus and I had these little teardrop babies. Uh, the like students that. like them because yeah. uh, they're bookmarks. Bookmark. Mm -hmm. And uh, I gave out 500, no, I gave out 5,000 in two months time. Mm -hmm. And I was paying $110 for 1,000 and then Dan said, you know, if you would order 700, if you would order 10,000 10, of these instead of 1,000, you could get them for $700 and you could save $300. So I bowed my head and I prayed, Father, in Jesus' name, would you give me $700 <laughs> so that I could order 10,000 of these and save $300? And two or three days later in the mail, here came a check for $717.60. Well, the Lord kind of answers prayers, doesn't He? Yep. Yeah. You know, we have not so often because we ask not. Yeah. And go ahead. Oh, we ask, uh, you know, the Lord too. I mean, we we don't we're not dependent on men. We there there there's never. Uh, well, I think we appeal. take that for granted that you do right. to do what you do. Yeah. Right. In fact, uh, Ron, uh, uh, the one that's in Washington D.C. is, you know, uh, that at the Supreme Court, he said that, uh, you know, how God has provided for him, you know, uh, all, all along, because he's by himself, you know, yeah. uh, you know, in his van, yeah. and he had three tires. He had three nails in his tires uh, this morning, and and uh, there was a brother there to help him, you wow. know, you know, uh, yeah. with those tires, you know, yeah. and he was just praising God for that. And uh, his fuel pump went out another time, and there was somebody else there that was, you know, uh, you know, there to fix it for him. Yeah. And, the uh, devil is doing all he can to put a stop he sure is. to it all, mm -hmm. too, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I like what you have on the back of this uh, teardrop bookmark, um, because I've already used that this morning and uh, starting out no matter how small a person is still a person. That's right. And uh, uh, how true that is uh, when, we, when we take that all into consideration uh, like that. Now, you got any plans of going out again soon? Where, where are you at? This is winter time. Now, I noticed some of the pictures and some of the newspaper articles that I looked at, it looked like it was pretty cold out there on those streets. Um, we work with the States of Refuge. It's a group that is trying to do away with okay. abortion in, uh, for instance, Mississippi, Arkansas, North Dakota, South Dakota, and what's Wyoming. The, Wyoming. Okay. The states that have one abortion facility. Do we go to those first? Okay. And we're, we'll be going to uh, North Dakota. New, in the fall. And we're also going to New Orleans for the ACOG convention. Mm -hmm. well, also. Uh, um, we're also uh, looking for Mississippi to be the first abortion-free state. So we've been working in Mississippi oh. for the last three years. Okay. And, um, yeah, we have a regular ru uh, routine that we go through. This is campus season. It'll be beginning okay. uh, in, in April. Okay. And uh, we go to the campuses in Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, and then usually other places, too, you know, as, a, you know, as the opportunities present yeah. themselves. Sometimes you just got to leave at the drop of a hat. Yeah. And people open their homes to us and give us meals, and we meet some really quality people on the way. Okay. Now, shouldn't you be retired? Well. Shouldn't you be taking life easy? I retired at 45 and went into full-time ministry. <laughs> you don't retire in the Lord's no, work, that's you don't. for sure. You don't. Don't even think about it. You yeah. don't, no. Well. You know, uh, the scriptures, I'm reminded of uh, Caleb and... Uh, when they got to the promised land, and Caleb was 85 years old, and they were picking out the land and everything, and he told Joshua, he said, uh, uh, see that land over there, that mountain over there, that's mine, give that to me. He said, give me my mountain. 
you know, and uh, at that age, she said, we, I can go forth and, uh, and I can do this, and which she did. And I think it's quite amazing. I think of you two, how courageous. I'm going to just say it like this. Now, you may correct me, but I see two courageous people here that could be taking life a little more easy because it looks like to me you have, um, this is your total agenda with you going as much as you are. You know, this is a, a f your life. This is a full time. Your life to help to try to save another life. Well, you know, it's also said of Caleb that he did more in his latter years than he did in his former years, you know. So, yes. I mean, this is, yeah. you know, we don't need to waste our time. Yeah. And we're going to stand before God one day. We're going to stand before Jesus. We're going to have to give Amen. an account, you know, what we did and what we did Amen. not do. Amen. And, uh, you know, yeah. you don't want to waste, you know, uh, you know, what he's given you. Too much has been given, too much is expected. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the other things that we were talking about before we started here, we was talking about uh, with that we occupy until the Lord comes. Mm -hmm. You know, we keep busy at His work. And I know that Jesus said that in the last days or in the, as the time draws to an end, when He knows when that's going to be, that uh, evil will get worse and worse. And certainly this is one of the most evilest, if that is a word, things that there is that is going on is this act of uh, aborting babies. Yes. Right. But Christians have abandoned the culture just because of that. They say, oh, this is the last days, you know, we're just going to sit and wait for the bus to take us to heaven, you know. Yeah. And uh, But that isn't, uh, you know, what we're nope. supposed to be doing. And, and actually, nope. the reason why evil is waxing, waxing worse is because the church is AWOL. You know, it's, it's absent without leave, you know. Christ did not give us leave, you know, to, to not contend for his law, not to contend for those who are being unjustly uh, led away to the slaughter. We have a duty to love our neighbor as ourselves, and we can't do that by, by turning a blind eye, a deaf ear, and a cold shoulder towards these children. We have a duty to speak up for them and to uh, try and save them. Amen. And right Amen. to life, uh, they, they tell you that life begins at conception, but it is a scientific fact that when the sperm and egg unite, there is a new DNA, a new human being, a new person with a new genetic code. Life begins at fertilization, mm -hmm. not conception. Mm -hmm. Conception's six or seven days later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at fertilization, yeah. Life begins. And so there God, there's God's plan. Yeah. In when thou uh, once was formed in thy womb, you know, as the psalm tells us, I knew thee. And what else did the Lord say? He said, I've known thee before the foundations of the world mm -hmm. were made. Mm -hmm. And it says the life is in the blood. There's your DNA. Yes. DNA. And the life DNA. is in the blood. Right. Yeah. Well, our yeah. message to really the aborted, uh, to, to the uh, mother is that God's got a plan and a purpose for you your go. life. There you go. And for the life of your unborn child. And you'll never know what that, mess, what that purpose is if you go against God's will and kill that child. Amen. You know, you know what you're killing, but you don't know who you're killing. Amen. You know, God, God uh, has a design for that person's life, and uh, no one has the right to, you know, to, uh, to t take that life, to terminate that life, you yeah. know, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's your baby, but it's not yours to kill. No. God commands, thou shalt not kill. Yeah. And I was going to say that. What did God say in the beginning? He said, thou shalt not kill. It's not complicated. Thou shalt not murder. Pardon? Right. It's not complicated. No. You don't have to be a judge or a lawyer yeah. to understand it. And you don't need to be a priest, a prophet, or a pastor to proclaim it. There you go. We all have a duty to love our neighbor as ourselves. Not right. just, you know, it's just not our ministry, yeah. you know, yeah. type of a thing. It's all of our ministry. And here, here's a whole new concept for me that you're talking about here. <clears throat> we're, we're, who's our neighbor? Oh, hey. The preborn. The preborn is our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not only did Jesus say what you do, what you do for them, you do for me. He said what you do not do for them, you do not do for me. Right. In Matthew twenty-five. He says, "Away from me, you evil doers." You know, uh, you know, right. to the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I mean, right. They say, "Well, didn't the Lord, Lord, you know, didn't we, you know, prophesy in your name? Didn't we do, yeah. you know, sing songs in your name and do all these marvelous works in your name?" He says, "I never knew you. Yeah, I never knew you. 
Yeah, right. Get away from me. And that's the words we don't want to hear. Right. If you ever want to hear a word from the Lord, that is a word you will not right. want to hear. The word that you want to hear, I mean, the most important thing we could live for, the thing which I want to hear more than anything else, the thing that I live for more than anything else, is to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't deserve it, yeah. okay? But, uh, uh, you know, but that would be right. the ultimate uh, thing that I'd be looking for. And, in fact, that was kind of go going to be, you answered my next question. What do you expect out of this? Are you gaining anything from this? What do you expect to gain from this? And, that, uh, um, and I think you've already answered my question. Mm -hmm. You do this because you love the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have 17 grandchildren together. Mm -hmm. 17 grandchildren. And, uh, yeah. you know, a um, hundred years from now, your house will be gone. Your TV will be in the junkyard. Um, but if you have children, you will have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And that's, that's really what's important, yeah. not your it career. Is. It is. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, one of the things that I have done, ever since I've been a Christian or maybe even before, I have prayed for my generations that come after me. I prayed for my children before they were born. I prayed for my children's children, which is now I have 15 grandchildren. And I've prayed for those children, great-grandchildren, that are yet to come to. What a heritage that we have with that. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just give you a, one more invite. If you're out there and you're thinking about an abortion, you need the Lord Jesus Christ. If, you're, if you know anyone that is thinking about this and you don't know how to counsel them, I want you to counsel them with the love of Christ using the truth of the Bible. Say, this is not God's way. God said, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not kill. And God will always be God. Maybe you need to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe, you, maybe that's where you need to be. Maybe you were there one time and... Maybe that's where you need to be right now. All you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Or perhaps, perhaps you've already aborted. You know, God is a God of forgiving. And God will forgive you. Just call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He is there. He's always there to forgive as we ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me of my sins. And the Lord will help you. Will, will help you to go through this situation. Uh, uh, I hope you watch this program. I hope you get, get the word out of this program. I hope you get the, the essence of this and the importance of what life is all about. Christ, God, created life, and he wants to have that life for you and for your baby. God bless you for joining us today. All right. Thanks so much. You've been watching Outreach Connection. If you would like to contact this ministry, you may write Outreach Connection, care of CTN, WTJR, 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois, 62301. This is your daily supporter update as of May the 13th. Today we had a total of $470 in donations. Those donations were from Quincy, Illinois, 100, 25, and 10, Cahoka, Missouri, 100, Vandalia, Missouri, 25, LaGrange, Missouri, 10, Palmyra, Missouri, 10, Colchester, Illinois, 50, Augusta, Illinois, 30, Hannibal, Missouri, 10, and 100. This brings our total for the month of May to 2,490.